Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Apple's product lineup is getting confusing and now more than ever, it can be hard to cut through all the hype and marketing info and find the sweet spot for which machine is gonna be the best one for you at the best value. This is the 2023 M2 MacBook Pro and this is the 2022 M2 MacBook Air. And there's a pretty big price difference between these two upon first glance. The Air starts at $1199, where the Pro starts at $1999. But when you start looking at the options within both of these models, to me is where things really start to get complicated. For instance, the Air that I have here will run you about $1,700, but spec'd out can go all the way up to $2,500. And then you start asking yourself, why would I spend that much when I could just buy a pro model for cheaper? I think that the why part of that is the important bit to focus on, and that's really dependent on how you use your machine. So if you wanna find out which of these two machines is right for you, if the price increase in the pro is worth it, and if you're on the fence about either of these, stick around and let's get into it. So first things first, I do think that it's really easy to get caught up in numbers and benchmarks with these laptops and feel like we're missing out. Admittedly, I had this happen to me when I ordered this 2023 M2 MacBook Pro and found out that SSD speeds were slower on this base model than options above it. And inside my heart sank a little bit and I was like, no, God, please, no, no. But the reality is any M series laptop is gonna be super powerful and light years ahead of older Intel machines, but these are still very expensive. And there are some reasons why you might choose this 13 inch M2 Air over the 14 inch M2 Pro or vice versa. The first thing that you're gonna notice just by looking at them, although they are somewhat similar in size, the Air is thinner, lighter, and a touch smaller, which I think is a really underrated thing about it. If you travel a lot, it's super easy to pack around with you, just throw in a bag or a case and not even notice it. It's one of the main reasons why I started using this instead of my old 16 inch M1 Pro. The 14 inch Pro is a bit larger, sort of like a happy medium between the two, but if you do like machines that have a super low profile, the Air is great in that regard. Both of these models have space gray and silver color options, but on the Air you also have midnight and starlight. I have starlight and I do like that. It's just got a subtle gold tint over the silver. I will caution anyone who wants midnight, I know that a lot of people like darker colors, but just be aware that it does show fingerprints easier than on other colors. And there are some reports of it showing wear easier around the USB ports. You do only have two USB-C ports on the Air, where on the Pro you have three along with an HDMI port and an SD card reader. Some important things to note about the USB-C ports on the Air, they're technically Thunderbolt 3, where on the Pro they're Thunderbolt 4. They do essentially run at the same speed, but the biggest difference here is that the M2 Air will only support one external monitor up to 6K at 60 Hertz, where the M2 Pro supports two or one 8K monitor at 60 Hertz. Also, just regarding that HDMI port on the Pro, that's been upgraded to what is essentially HDMI 2.1. Uh, the old versions had HDMI 2.0, so now you can run 4K up to 240 hertz, or push this all the way up to 8K 60 if you want. The SD card reader is a UHS-2 reader, so you get decent speeds as far as SD cards go, but I have noticed that with some micro SD cards in adapters, it doesn't pick them up as well as on my CalDigit TS4 hub. With a hub like the TS4, you can open up both of these machines a lot more in regards to SD card readers and Thunderbolt ports, I will leave a link in the description to this one along with some other options if folks are interested, but outside of that, coming back to the machines, the keyboards are pretty much the same. The Pro looks a little bit different because it has that black backing, but that's really the only difference there. They both feel pretty much the same to type on and they do have roughly the same size trackpads as well. Above the keyboard, one of the more notable things for me is the display. Uh, they're not too different in size. The Air is 13.6 inches, where the Pro is 14.2, so marginally bigger, but the panel itself is the big difference there. The Air has a 60 Hz IPS liquid retina display, where the Pro has a mini LED 120 Hz ProMotion. Uh, the Pro model will have deeper blacks, the color will pop a little bit more, and be a little bit smoother in some instances in the Air. If you're doing 3D work, scrolling, watching content, that's where you're likely gonna notice a difference in refresh rates the most. ProMotion displays have variable refresh rates, so this can go anywhere between 24 and 120 hertz. And for video that runs at 24 frames per second, like TV shows and movies, it's going to look a lot better, especially if you're looking out for that kind of thing. Honestly though, they're both pretty great displays. They both have fantastic color accuracy if you're doing any kind of creative work. 
And the brightness levels between these two in real world use is fairly comparable as well. The big thing that catches everyone's eyes on the spec sheet is the 1600 nits peak brightness and 1000 nits sustained brightness on the ProMotion display. But keep in mind those higher numbers are for HDR content only. For regular SDR content that drops to 500 nits matching the display in the air. And if you stick these side by side, they are very similar. If display quality is something that is really important to you and you look for all those finer details and you'll definitely notice a difference, but these are both pretty great. They both have roughly the same size notch with a 1080p webcam that looks relatively the same in my opinion. They both have three mic arrays for picking up your voice. The Pro is supposed to be a little bit better quality and I do find it sounds a touch better, but here's a sample just to judge for yourself. So this is the camera on the MacBook Air. This is what it looks like and what it sounds like. It's using the internal microphones and it's recording at the maximum possible setting in QuickTime. So now let's do the same thing on the MacBook Pro. So now we're on the MacBook Pro. This is what it looks like and sounds like on the internal microphones. I do find that it can occasionally look a little bit warmer than on the Air, but this is what it looks like and what it sounds like. If you're on calls a lot, I'm not sure that there is much of a difference there, but moving from sound input to output, uh, the speakers in the MacBook Pro are honestly one of my favorite things about this machine. You've got a six speaker high fidelity sound system in the Pro where on the Air you only have a four speaker system. Don't get me wrong, both of these produce clean, clear sound, but the Pro models are just on another level and are unmatched when it comes to any other laptop that I've tried. I think I'm actually just gonna ditch the speakers at my desk and use the MacBook Pro speakers. The crazy thing about these is that they're not only clear, but they do have a really full sound to them, which is kind of nuts given the form factor. The Air speakers just don't have the range that the Pros do and they lack a little bit on the low end, but they're still great, but not as great as the Pro, and that carries over to performance as well. This is one area where I think people get a little lost because if you look at these machines on their own, both of them are extremely powerful and have way more power than most people actually need. But there are a few things that I do want to mention or use cases where you might want to pick up one over the other. First, I want to mention the Base M2 machine. That starts at $1199 and you're getting an 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs gigs of storage. I think the only people who should be considering that particular model are people who use their machine very casually, or if you just use it for things like office software, emails, watching content, that kind of thing. The main reason why I say that is because of that 8 gigs of RAM. Anytime you spin up more demanding apps like photo or video editing software, I think Photoshop in itself takes up almost eight gigs just to run it, but doing anything like that or mobile software development, graphic design, it really doesn't take much to max that out and it does become a bottleneck and it just ends up taxing the rest of your system out as well. So at minimum for any kind of creative or highly technical work, you wanna have at least 16 gigs of RAM. And there's one other thing to note on that base SSD as well. That 256 gig option on the M2 Air is considerably slower than the 512 gig option above it. Again, if you're using it casually or for productivity or office software, probably not something that you're gonna notice. But if you're doing anything where there's a lot of data transfer happening or you're working with large files, 512 is a better option. The M2 Pro also suffers from the same thing where the base storage is a lot slower than the options above it, but it is actually still a touch faster than the fastest SSD in the Air. And that's at kind of a point where you're not really gonna notice unless you need a ton of performance. The Air that I have has both those 16 gigabyte RAM and 512 gig SSD options. And I've been using it a ton for creative work, like creating these videos, some programming and some light work in Blender. And it's more than capable in most of those areas. For things like productivity and coding, everything is very snappy. Compile times are quick for small and average size projects. And for video editing, I've never had any issues within Final Cut Pro as it relates to performance when editing a 4K timeline. 3D or graphically intensive work like After Effects, Fusion, or Blender is really where the air starts to get pushed to its limits. Like I said, you can do that work, but the machine does get pretty warm. And because the air is fanless, it will start to throttle a bit and everything does slow down and up to about a 25% performance hit. If you move over to the Pro, you'll see that that's improved because you do have a lot more GPU power with 16 cores versus eight or 10 on the air. And it does have active cooling with fans so you don't see throttling like you do in the air. With 3D rendering, I notice a pretty drastic difference where the Pro renders out scenes over twice as fast as on the air in most cases. 
And the same can be said for super large software builds. I pulled down the Brave browser repo and compiled everything there, and it took me three hours and five minutes on the Air versus two hours and nine minutes on the Pro. So that is a substantial difference. If you do have those larger builds at work that you maybe have to do once or twice a week, but for regular software projects of small or medium size where your build times are a lot less, maybe a couple minutes or so, there's really not much disparity. Both of these are gonna smoke any old Intel MacBook, but I will say if you need a lot of power or you're doing a lot of GPU intensive stuff professionally, the Pro does make a big difference. On the other hand, if you're just a graphic designer and you're opening Figma, Photoshop, or Illustrator for most of the day, maybe you're editing a 4K video without a ton of effects or you're a programmer and you're just working away in VS Code and smaller size projects or Xcode or whatever it is, the Air is still more than enough to get the job done. You can get a full day's battery on either of these machines most of the time. I say most of the time because there are some caveats with that. If you head over to Apple's site, it does look like these have very similar battery life, but if you look a little bit closer, you can see that the Air only has a 52.6 watt hour battery, where the Pro is at 70 watt hours, which is a considerable difference. For most things, you'll see a nice gradual draw on both of these machines that will last for a full workday, but in my testing, the Pro does last considerably longer. So for me, in a full eight hour workday, doing some heavy 3D stuff and programming, mixed in with some productivity and web browsing, I still have around 30% battery life left over on the Pro that I can carry over to the next day, where on the Air, I can expect to have to charge it towards the end of my workday, doing the same types of things. That being said, both of these will eat battery if you're running them anywhere between 90 and 100% CPU usage, and you will likely have to plug them in if you're running anywhere near 100% capacity for more than two or three hours at a time. Outside of that though, it does drain at a much more conservative rate. I do think that the battery life might also be extended on the Pro in some cases with the addition of Bluetooth 5.3. This is a pretty big upgrade over any previous M-series MacBooks that only have Bluetooth 5.0. I mentioned this last week, but while it doesn't sound like there should be a big difference between the two, there is a five-year difference between version 5.3 and 5.0, and I have noticed that it does seem to work a touch better on the Pro than the Air. In some edge cases where I've had issues in the past with all my previous Macs, the M2 Pro seems to be a bit more stable. I haven't had any issues with Bluetooth package dropping or anything like that. Granted, the Air has been pretty good on that front as well, but there has been some weirdness I've experienced when connecting AirPods when an app is open that would cause things to behave strangely. Macs have been pretty notorious in the past for having weird Bluetooth issues, especially with keyboards and mice. So if that is something that you have problems with, the Pro might help in that regard. Also new with wireless is the addition of Wi-Fi 6E on the M2 Pro. The M2 Air does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, but I found that the Pro still is a lot faster, even on plain Wi-Fi 6. If you have a gigabit connection or close to, You'll probably notice that speed difference a little more, but below that, I think that you'll just be splitting hairs unless you have a legit Wi-Fi 6 e router. All things considered here, both of these are still really great machines. You can do pretty much anything you want on either of these. I'd say it really boils down to two things. One, your workflow is super demanding where you need that extra boost in graphics performance for doing things like visual effects, 3D work, or some heavier software stuff. Or two, you just really like the added features in the Pro like the display, the sound, and the extended battery life. Or on the flip side, you like the smaller size and portability of the Air. For most folks, the Air will do you just fine, but I would say stay away from the base model Air unless it's just for super casual use. What I would probably do if you are on a budget is just keep an eye out for a refurbished error with at least 16 gigs of RAM on the Apple refurb site, and that will save you some money. Let me know in the comments down below which of these two machines that you would pick, or maybe that you've purchased, or if you're just sticking with an M1 machine. I hope you found this useful. If it was, feel free to hit that like button if you wanna see more tech-related content, or if you wanna start a business with me selling sharks with lasers attached to their heads, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.